Hey everybody, what's up? Red J Head here, and today I am going to show you all something that's a little bit unique. Um, before I begin this video, I just want everybody to know that this isn't any financial advice. This is just, you could think of it sort of like a real life case study or real life example. Um, and also, um, I'd love to hear your comments on my understanding of this information as well as um, your advice or your tips or your questions. However, I do want to preface that for those of you that are looking in the comments in this particular video for financial advice, um, I would recommend against it. There will be people below that comment with great advice, but the problem is you may not know how to filter between the good advice and the bad advice. And so um, because of that alone, I highly, you know, uh, recommend that, you know, you be cautious when you're looking up uh, this kind of stuff on the Internet, because there are a lot of scammers out there. We're talking about money here. And uh, yeah, you just you never know. I've been scammed many times in the past, and I'm sure I will be scammed in the future. What I have laid out for you today is um, more or less a five-year um, track of how my money has been spent towards my mortgage. I don't. I I have some authority over how this changes and how I make my payments, but basically, I've just been paying it biweekly with a value flex variable is what they call it. So the way I understand it is it's sort of a open um, mortgage where my interest will change based off of how the economy is going and how the uh, banking institutions of Canada decide to uh, change the prime rate um, and, you know, influence the interest rate again based on how the economy is going inflation um uh poverty wealth etc also there's a lot there's a lot to unfold there but that's not the point um so th this is actually for me this isn't really for anybody like online but i'm just posting it in case you know some people find it curious so for myself i'm just trying to document here because I started out with a mortgage of 411000 That's how much my condo cost here in Toronto, Canada. Um, <coughs> approximately five years ago. It has since gone up in value um, a fair amount. Um, and the thing that... The reason why I'm making this video is because I made a mistake. Um, and I want to document that mistake so I can look back at it in the future and see, you know how bad of a mistake it was or how small of a mistake it was. I think the mistake that I made is fully dependent on um, how I decide to react to it. The annoying mistake that I made is in 2019, the world was going, um, for lack of a better word, normal, um, and it continued to do so until COVID hit, which was around... I guess February 7th, April 3rd, 2020, or maybe a little bit before that. I don't remember exactly when COVID hit, but the thing is, um, when COVID hit, my bi-weekly um, payments did an interesting shift. So when I started out, uh, $500 um, dollars toward my bi-weekly payments were going kind of in my pocket towards my property. That's the way I look at it. And $447 were going toward interest. So the lending institution that gave me $411,000 in the first place. A lot of people like to say that interest is bullshit. Um, I hate it, blah, blah, blah. And yes, it kind of sucks ass. I'm not going to argue against it. But I do want to mention that it could be a lot worse. So for example... Uh, my father was born in Romania during a time when there was dictatorship. Uh, and during that time, uh, the banks 
would either scam you a lot. You couldn't necessarily trust to even leave your money in the banks. And also, um, uh, there were very, very limited lending opportunities. Um, the dictator uh, who ran the country at the time, Nikolai Ceausescu, had strict rules that for certain people, like my father, uh, limited um, uh, growth in wealth. So the fact that somebody gave me $400,000 based on my credit score and entrusted me with this money is kind of a big deal. Like th this interest rate that they're making off of this money you could argue that, you know, it's unfair, but you could also argue that it's fair that they're making money because you could go to a loan shark or something like that. And, you know, with a bank, you file for bankruptcy, but with a loan shark, you know, they might hurt you or something like that. Anyways, this is all to say that it's kind of all relative the way you look at this. Um, but going back to the main point over here. Um, oh, this video is getting really interesting. I did not expect it to turn in the direction that it's been turning. But I've been paying $500 um, towards my principal and $400. And interestingly enough, when COVID hit, not only did my biweekly payments get lower, they went from 956 to, at a certain point, the, at the lowest, they were going at 826 So that was awesome. But there was a huge shift in the principal and interest. I was paying only $188 in interest. And most of my money, 75% of it, was going towards principal. Which is, for me, um, uh, like a big deal. It, it, it made a huge difference in the way I live my life. Now, my big mistake was that over here, I didn't lock in the rate. Which is fine to a certain degree because I did reap the rewards of this rate for a long time like I, th I i shoot you not i think i was getting 1.35 percent on interest during my my interest the interest rate for my lending was 1.35 percent um which to me is insanely low I, i'm on a five-year term so my term is ending soon anyways but this was a huge help um for me to save and and grow because i'm living in a home right now that i don't plan on living forever in i plan on owning land um so the this this home that i'm financing right now is is, is temporary accommodation um as far as i'm concerned um and so the fact that i was able to save more money in towards buying a larger home which the homes in toronto as you all know at this point are ridiculously expensive we're not going to get into that the problem was i didn't lock in this rate and as we start to get into the more scary stuff this is what happens when you have an open interest and you um uh and and the economy the banks decide to increase the rate basically for whatever reason the banks decide to increase the rate usually they're good reasons um sometimes they're not one way or another it affects me heavily because as you can see um once the banks decided I, by the way these increases one percent 0.75 percent there were some increases over here as well that happened um that i wasn't able to document because i don't have the pdf files for them anymore because they expire um and i didn't keep copies of them which it's it's not a big deal you could probably do the math for these but it's not a big deal so as you can see here at the lowest point i was paying 638 dollars and at the highest point i was paying 188 dollars um on principal and interest so now what happened is because the bank of canada decided to increase the interest rates um due to a few um reasons the biggest of which was saying that they're trying to balance the prices of homes we'll see how that's gonna go i think they're trying to balance the prices of homes because they realized that investors were trying to purchase um a lot of residential property and it wasn't normal nor should it be considered normal and so they're trying to make these investors bleed a little bit so that they refrain from purchasing so much residential property so people like myself who just need one 
uh, can afford it. Um, but with that being said, one way or another, they increase. And as you can see, the increase started, they started low. There were some over here, like 0 0.25, uh, 0 0.5. Then there was one increase at 1%. And then things got really hectic because um, they went 0 0.75, they went 0 0.5, and they went 0 0.5. And at the top here, you'll notice that my interest rate right now is as high as bi-weekly $786 and I'm paying less in principle toward my actual home right now. So the money that's going in my pocket bi-weekly is $400 and the lending institution is receiving $786, which I wish like, I don't know. <sighs> it's like the highest it should go. I don't, because it's funny because the way I think about it is these lending institutions at the end of the day, most of these money, most of this money will go to very, very wealthy people. I'm sure it'll find its way there one way or another. Like I'm sure the people at the lending institution that I use, it's not this, this interest rate, this is the, the increase in interest rate is going to go to the business and the business doesn't give their low level people raises. They have, they have this um, corporate structure, which is which is fine. Uh, honestly, it's the way most businesses operate, um, and so their corporate structure means that when good things like this happen to the business, like the business is going to make the lending institution is going to make a lot of money now because the interest rate is higher, and obviously, you know, they have millions, I would imagine, of um, mortgages that they're. Um, you know, uh, taking, uh, um, uh, that they're, that they're managing. So this might seem like a little for one mortgage mine alone, but when you have several of them, it starts to <laughs> add up heavily. So I don't know what I'm going to do in the future. Um, I may pay off a little bit of my, um, current mortgage just so that the interest rates are lower. So I'm comfortable with my monthly payments. Although there is that sense of comfortability in having cash on hand, like liquid cash, which I do, which is invested in several, um, uh, very low profile, um, uh, uh, investment accounts. Um, I don't invest in stocks. I used to. I didn't understand it. I steered away from it. Um, I don't have any of my money in crypto because <laughs> uh, that's a shit storm of its own. Realistically, I kind of uh, live and subscribe to the idea, you know, uh, make your money, put it in your pocket. If you can, invest it in real estate that you can afford. If you can't, just invest some of it in enjoying your life and hold on to most of it because at the end of the day, depending on how you structure your life, you don't necessarily need a lot to be happy. Um, so I hope this helped some of you. This is insane for me that I didn't lock in because I, I think I did the math and I must have lost. This is a fifth. I did the math and this is at least a $10,000 loss to me. There is $10,000 of money that went towards interest here that could have went to me instead could have went towards my principal had i locked in at this rate at the time that i was able to and i've talked to a few mortgage lenders who said that i definitely could have locked in but this is a can you tell the future kind of can you predict the future kind of vibe but even if i couldn't predict the future to have a rate as low as 1.35 percent it's a no-brainer like it's a no-brainer so it's it's a mistake. Any way you look at it, if you talk to somebody who's educated in the topic, it's just a clear mistake that I've made here that have, that has made me lose, you know, upwards of $10,000, um, which could have been money that could have went towards, um, you know, my security blanket. Let's call it that because I'm in a um, I'm in a privileged position where I don't have to worry for a while if I lose my job or you know, if the economy goes bad or, um, and also I live in a great country. I live in Canada and, you know, uh, they say that being poor in this country is, uh, um, better than being rich in, or even, you know, being middle-class in a lot of other countries. So I can't complain, but anyways, 
uh, Red Jayhead, I hope you learn from this lesson in the future and um, are able to apply this information somehow going forward. Um, good luck to you uh, and uh, uh, keep keep up the good work, champ. Don't be so stupid next time. Yeah, okay. Bye.